back to our collective experience during COVID-19, I'm almost certain that we can all relate to some, if not all of the following. Avoiding crowded cities, trying not to let the messages of confusion and panic in the news completely ruin your day, traveling home by whatever means possible to try and get home before the, the travel bans were implemented, being one of the lucky ones with healthy immune systems, being one of the unlucky ones who got COVID and had to go to hospital, losing loved ones, unintentionally being a carrier for the virus, possibly even affecting those around you, watching the map of infection grow until entire continents were covered in red, hiding inside, not going out into the real world, abiding in the call to quarantine to help prevent the spread, Worrying about reinfection after reviving your low-level character's corpse in Ironforge? <laughs> okay, maybe the last one isn't that relatable, but what if I told you all of my previous points actually had nothing to do with the COVID-19 pandemic, but rather a virtual pandemic way back in 2005? The computer game World of Warcraft, often called WoW, is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. It was released in 2004 by Blizzard Entertainment. And it has millions of active players still today. It peaked at 4 million in 2005. It has about 8 million today, I think. On the 13th of September, 2005, two tiny developer bugs resulted in a virtual pandemic that would have consequences far reaching. I need to give you some in-game context before describing the bugs. I must introduce you to Hakar, the soul player. This is an ancient blood god worshipped by forest, worshipped by, sorry, a tribe of jungle trolls. There we go. Hakar is the final boss that players must fight in World of Warcraft's raid, that first 20 player raid in 2005. All that means is that you and 19 other WoW players get together in a very specific instance and run around until you kill all the things. I emphasize on the specific instance because stuff that happens in the raid should not be let outside into the, rest of the, into the rest of the game. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. So while your character is fighting Hakar, Hakar can deal damage and a spell called Corrupted Blood. This initially deals a thousand damage to your character, irrelevant. The important part is it puts a dot or a damage over time onto your character that for the next 10 seconds, every two seconds, deals 200 damage. So all I'm saying is that over time, it keeps on doing damage to you. More importantly, is this disease from your character would spread to all surrounding characters, all surrounding pets, anyone within the vicinity, and it would spread from them, et cetera, except um, essentially a virus. As you can see from my beautiful PowerPoint 365 skills, the corrupted blood can be passed by Hakar onto characters in a raid, onto pets in a raid, who then spread them between each other due to their proximity. I mentioned the bug earlier. When characters leave raids, all of the diseases on them, all of the spells, all of that should be reset. Developers know this, developers do this. But a bug in this raid meant that some pets didn't get that reset. Some characters, hunters and warlocks, can summon pets and dismiss, dismiss pets at will. The problem is, when you, you do this in a raid multiple times, the problem is when you dismiss a pet, it essentially saves that pet in its state. So if it was affected by the corrupted blood virus, when you dismiss it, it is still affected. They then left the dungeon, the bug didn't reset that virus, and when these hunters and warlocks resummoned their pets outside the raid, they would still be affected, and boom, the virus just spread, just spread like crazy in the real world of WoW. So, high-level high players had a lot of health, and this was just an annoying tick on their health. It just reduced their health a little bit over time, but they were okay. But low-level characters with little health died immediately, essentially killing thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of characters as soon as the virus spread. I mentioned there were two bugs. Bug number one, they didn't reset the damage. Bug number two, non-playable characters could get the disease. And because they have such high health, they never die, essentially acting as super spreaders. Non-playable characters, and pets were asymptomatic, but they carried the disease and spread it further and further and further until eventually realms were infected. 
there were some great conspiracy theories. A lot of players thought that the virus was engineered by Blizzard on purpose for some reason. Um, all hunters and warlocks were to be cast out no matter what, not allowed in cities. Interesting parallel to the anti-Asian rhetoric faced during our COVID pandemic. Players came up with a system where if you had the virus, you had to flag yourself as infected, and those who didn't, you flag yourself as not infected, and so then discrimination between players. Again, an interesting rhetoric to COVID. Blizzard themselves, the game company, beg people to quarantine, social distance, isolate, stop all unnecessary travel, all of those good buzzwords. But alas, cities became littered with character corpses as nobody listened and everyone just ran around doing whatever they wanted. Luckily, Blizzard could do something we, we never could. Just reset everyone, everything, every, every server. Step one, reset every server. Step two, send out a hot fix, a quick patch that just let the pets not get infected, stop the source. Step three, make the developers work endlessly for a couple of days until they fix the actual cause of the, of the root bugs. Two avid WoW players and epidemiologists from the Tufts University, Dr. Eric Lofgren and Professor Nina Pfefferman, co-authored a paper in 2007 examining the potential impact that this corrupted blood incident had for refining existing epidemiological models essentially just pandemic mathemat mathematical models. Reading their paper today, 16 years later, there are some crazy parallels between what they predicted in, in the way that humans behaved in a pandemic as to what, how we behaved in the COVID-19 pandemic. They both acknowledge that games obviously have some serious differences between real life. The biggest one being games encourage you to behave in a manner that is not encouraged in real life. In games, death isn't permanent. That's a big one. There's no cognitive load associated with hurting other players, killing other players. Risks are constructed and perceived as such. This is true for most games. However, in WoW, something interesting happened. Most players create a virtual persona that actually means quite a lot to them. They play the same character for years and years and years. And so when the corruptive blood pandemic erupted, they, they were caught by surprise, no one, no one was warned, and their reactions were genuine. And possibly a full view of how irrationally humans actually act in these surprising and terrifying situations, even though it was just in a game. So these two scientists' research has led to the speculation that gamifying models, especially for infectious disease epidemics, might be plausible, which might allow research, researchers to derive data from games to help them build better mathematical models, especially to better account for the unpredictability of human behavior, because that's the big one. We can't model that. Why did we go buy all the toilet paper? Unfortunately, it would be very, very expensive to convince game developers to potentially jeopardize their entertainment value just so we can get some data. Imagine if the pandemic in WoW was as long as our COVID-19 pandemic, no one would play. I like this quote from Dr. Lofgren. We often view epidemics as these things that sort of happen to people. There's a virus and it's doing things. But really, it's a virus that's spreading between people. And how people interact and behave and comply with authority figures or don't, these are all very important things. And also, these things are very chaotic. You can't really predict, oh yeah, everyone will quarantine, it'll be fine. No, it won't. Essentially, humans are incredibly diff difficult to mathematically model due to our irrationality. We are unpredictable and we hoard toilet paper, as mentioned, for no reason. Learning from games is great. We only wish we could apply the reset button to real life. But at least MMORPGs have potential to help research researchers and epidemi epidemiologists better model their mathematical models so we can learn from our virtual selves. Thank you. <laughs>